Hi guys, good morning. Welcome to the studio. Happy Monday. You ready to talk about what the kids are learning in classes this week? I'm happy to be back in the Liberty studio this Monday and it's the third week of April. I have a bunch of project samples that I pulled out of the closet and sketchbooks. And so I can show you like in progress work, a little bit of visual aids instead of just me talking at you. How's that sound? So a little bit before we get started in our intro here, and just a heads up, we'll talk about it in housekeeping as well, but there are five Mondays and five Tuesdays in the month of April. Um, for my drawing and my multimedia students, normally we take those days off, but this month we're going to go ahead and have class on those fifth days because by starting our May classes on April 29th and April 30th, we can finish our May curriculum before Memorial Day. The alternative is that um, Tuesday people would have class after Memorial Day and Monday people would have class in June and that's just not okay. So we're going to go ahead and meet on those days. May will officially start on April 29th. So just a heads up for everybody. We'll talk about it every week until then. Yeah. So your first May video is coming in just two weeks, even though it'll still be April. Um, and then just a reminder, you can always find that information in your Shoyer account. Um, and you can get to your sugar account by um, following the instructions on the four current students website. All right, here we go. Preschool classes. Look at how cute these kids are. They are um, exploring fiber arts, just like our big kids. Um, we're doing art inspired by nature and um, a lot of like texture and um, fibrous stuff. We've alternated the first two weeks in April where one of the studios did Ferdinand and one of the studios did um, make way for ducklings. So we're done alternating. We do not need the rubber mallets anymore. So both studios will be reading Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. This week, we uh, warm up with coloring on sticks or branches using wet chalk. And I go like this because it is so textural. Uh, the, the chalk becomes almost paint-like or paste-like. It becomes super rich in color, even though it's just sidewalk chalk. Uh, it becomes, like, instead of being dusty and scratchy, it becomes, like, buttery um, when you soak sidewalk chalk. Anyone who's ever accidentally left it out in the rain knows that. Uh, so we're going to color it, but we're going to color in branches, which, of course, are very textural, too. So that's our warm-up. Um, and then we're going to read the story, and the art that they make will be um, a combination of drawing and mixed media. So we'll get to apply um, stickers and stamps in the shape of letters. Because if you've ever read Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, that makes sense. And that'll wrap up the month of April. So all of our preschool classes, that whether you meet Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday um, at either studio, this is your last week of April classes. You are not affected by that fifth Monday, Tuesday. Like you just get to take it off. It's okay. We'll start your May classes when May classes start. So whenever May happens, that's when your class starts. Um, it only applies to our four time a week classes that we have to kind of scoot another class in there before the end of the month. So. Um, so you guys, um, for any of my Monday and Tuesday people, you're actually going to have two weeks off and we'll continue to tell you that in the videos and we'll send reminders. And again, you can look up your schedule inside your Sawyer account, but, um, but you'll have you have Monday and Tuesday people after this week, you'll have two weeks off and then May classes will start. My Thursday, Friday people, you'll only have one week off. K first, second, third, and K third, you guys, it is Fiber Arts Month. Um, and last week was the week we started sewing. So I'm going to show you their in-progress work, but just know they haven't really started sewing on their work. The first week we did designing of our little monster plushies. In the second week, which was last week, we practiced sewing. We learned how to thread a needle. We learned how to um, use a needle threader, which for a lot of kids, that's easy, not for everybody. Um, I shouldn't say it's easy. It's not easy for everybody um, or anybody. It's easier to use the needle threader than it is to just try to stick the thread through the eye of the needle for some kids. Some kids are like, this doesn't even make sense. Why would I add six steps when I only need one? Um, so it's totally up to them, but we do teach them how to use the needle threader because it's a great tool. And then we uh, we practice sewing either on practice felt or on paper. This week, they'll actually start sewing. So I wanted to show you some of their monster designs. And of course, they've got like a paper pattern. And then the instructors did all of the felt cutting. They chose their colors and then they did their felt cutting. So these are two pieces 
course, I picked a green one because it's this is actually green, guys. <laughs> but you know, it just disappears in my green screen. But it's okay. I'll keep it in front of me, and then that will work, and you'll see what I mean. But isn't that cute. So there are two pieces. So in in every design, when they were making their patterns. The fleshy part is where the two shapes come together. And then any of the extremities of our monster horns, legs, um, arms, um, whatever that sticks out the side, outside of the, the two matching shapes, that just is a single, single piece. So, um, so the instructors will pin these together and then the kids will, will sew a running stitch all the way around. That's what we start this week. Um, and then they do have some, I have to be really careful not to lose any pieces, you guys, but I mean, they do have, so I can't do it on video because it's totally, um, back. But look at that, isn't that cute? So they got some other pieces, there's more pieces in here, but I don't want to take them out because I don't want to lose them. Um, but it looks like there's some eye shapes around here and they're cut out of different, different colors. We let them give us the the whole pattern, and then we did all of the, the, the legwork of cutting for them. And I, I mentioned it in the other videos. The only reason that we cut is just because I mean, cutting felt requires really sharp scissors. So we do have some fabric scissors that we use, and we only have four pair. And it's just it's just easier this way. But you can see, like, this person, their outside shape and then their inside shape. And again, there's more, there's more pieces in here. I don't know if they're like spots or I don't know. It'll be cute. So that's what we got going on in there. That'll be fun. So they will start their sewing on their actual project this week. Some kids are going to knock this out of the park, you guys. And they are going to be done sewing like at the end of class. At the end of week three, they're going to be all the way around. They're going to be all the way stuffed. And they're going to be sewn clothes. And they're going to be like, now what? <laughs> so... Um, if that's your kid, because they've got a little sewing experience, then we will have things for them to do, right? There are other fiber arts that they can explore. They can explore um, yarn wall hangings, which I'll talk about when we get to um, creative explorations. Um, they can explore pom-pom making. They can explore friendship bracelet making and all these things that use kind of string art. Um, you know, if they want to practice, you know, with our tons of scrap felt, um, but if they want to make little plushies and just mass produce things, we'll give them the sewing scissors and they can go to town. So um, for our like experienced sewers or the ones that really just pick it up really quick, there will be plenty to do. But there will also be plenty of artists that this is like, this is really tricky. Um, and they're going to have to do some unsewing, you know, because they accidentally do a whip instead of a running stitch um, or it gets knotted or it gets tangled or it comes unthreaded or who knows, right? Um so there's a lot of roadblocks for some of our kids. It's a slow process. Like I said, some are gonna get it like this and then some are gonna need a lot of like help. And so it will take them two class periods to get it all the way so around. And that's okay. Cause the only way you get better at it is to, con to continue to do it, right? Kind of like the song, can't go over it, can't go under it, gotta go through it. And the only way to get better is to go through this. The video or the picture here, you guys, isn't this cute? We're all sitting down in the rugs and um, they're they're learning to like thread needles and tie knots and that kind of stuff, like collaboratively as a group. So that's what's going on in that picture. Okay, here we go. So our fourth and fifth graders, you guys, and our homeschoolers, they are doing embroidery projects. And so I brought a couple to show you. The first week was the week that we dyed the fabric. And we drew on their like garden inspired design. In week two, they learned um, the same thing that our K1s learned. So we learned our like how to thread a needle, how to um, tie a knot at the end. Because that's one thing an instructor, when you've got 14 kids that you're trying to sew with, if I have to thread everybody's needle and tie knots for everybody, that's great the first time, but it's a it's like a stumbling block in class, like a productivity if every single time somebody's waiting for me to come around and thread a needle. So we teach that at the beginning. Um, so like we got all that done. And these guys, a lot of them have done this before. So this isn't quite as tricky, which is great. Um, they are using embroidery floss instead of like K K3s are using um, a crochet thread. 
which stays together a little bit more and borders less has a tendency to like spread, spread out and go different directions. So it can be kind of frustrating. Uh, and then there's more decision making in, in the, the art making process, right? Because they have to pick all their colors, which is great. Uh, so this is this is an example. Um, again, the, the green parts that you see, like this leaf over here, is showing up um, a little bit orange because of the green screen. But I'm going to put it up kind of close so you can see what we have going on. And they've covered their for working on covering all of their hot glue with these embroidery stitches. We got some really, really amazing things. Some of our kids are just now realizing that, oh, everything I hot glued is gonna have to be covered with string. Um, and if they're like not a fast sewer or a fast embroiderer, um, they might have a lot of time invest, like planned out and invested in this. And, you know, some might switch gears, we'll see. Um, but lots of really great things happening here. I brought another one to show you. I hope it shows up. There's a lot of green. Oh, it doesn't. I'm going to turn off my green screen for just a second, you guys. Hang on. Let's see if this works. Video settings. Background. I have a green screen. Does that work? Aha. Okay. Let me see if this, if I put it in front of me, it should work. No. Well, you can see it if I keep it back here. But look at these different cactuses, right? Cacti. And then um, instead of going like around this little rainbow cactus shape, she's going across it to fill in all of that space with the cactus. That was so fun. I love that. Very creative. Good stuff. So a lot of great stuff happening. Um, I'm just turning my green screen back on. Uh, a lot of great stuff happening in um, our embroidery sessions i'm super super proud of these um we haven't done embroidery with the older kids in a while and i think the hat blue really helps you see where you are so, super pleased with that our next group so i should mention so like their plan you guys for the next two weeks is simply to embroider like it is like come in grab your hoop get your noodle get your, your noodle get your needle get your thread and get to work that's it for two weeks. That's what we need to do um, and get finished. Just work time. You got kids that like want to bring in headphones and um, play music on their phones. So they can just get in and focus. We're good with that. There is very little instruction needs to happen. This is just, just pure work time to get this done. Um, not that they have to have headphones, but you know, for some kids, like putting them in that like focused Mindset, they do best with some headphones. If that if that's your kiddo, they're more than welcome to, to bring those in and put those in during work time. Not, not like during arrival, but during work time. All right, our sixth, seventh, and our eighth through twelfth, you guys, we are needle felting. So I brought the example stuff with me. Um, so I'm gonna show you what we got. Are you ready? So remember their first week, they're doing butterflies their first week was to make their body. So this is kind of a finger size. That's what we were measuring with piece of felt. And wool roving, you guys, is super fluffy, like cotton candy, until you stab it. That's what they're doing in this video, or this video, in this picture. Over and over and over again, they're gonna stab it with a barbed needle. And that barb tangles up all those fibers, kind of like your hair gets tangled when you sleep, and becomes matted and tangled, and tighter and tighter and tighter until you get something that is solid and you can actually felt through these shapes. So this is their body and then they're starting on their wings. This is one of the wings. You got a really great wing shape. They had to design their wing shape. Um, right now you'll notice that they are white. Um, the other one I'm going to show you is black. They just picked a base color and then they will put um, the colored wool roving that they'll, they'll felt on top to make all of their designs. But so those will eventually go together and then it'll get another one and then they will actually stand up as a 3D sculpture. So lots of really great things. I'll show you my other one. The wing shapes, you guys, they had to make the, like a paper pattern of what their wing shape would be. So you can see this one is a different shape than um, the white one I just showed you. And then, then they're using this as their 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 guide or their template to to shape it because you can like pull the wool and fold it over and push it on. So 
lots of great things going on. So then they'll felt these two things together. Is what we'll have to. Then we'll have little butterflies. So good stuff. They are kind of in the same boat. Well, no, they're exactly in the same boat as our fourth and fifth in our homeschool. They have work time. <laughs> we need to come in, grab your butterfly, grab your wool roving, get your foam pad, get your barb needle, and get to work. It is like all the lesson time is done. Um, and there's still decisions that need to make happen, you know, like colors and designs and shape and scale and that kind of stuff. But collectively as a group, there's no like teacher instruction that needs to happen for everybody. Um, they just need to come in and get to work. So we've got two hours left to get the butterfly sculptures done. Um, and that's that's their plan for the next two weeks. All right, our creative explorations kids, and I didn't bring anything from their classes. Um, this is one of our videos. They are you guys fiber arts with this crew. They're they're loving it. All of it. Um so you can see this is like a, a free, like open exploration felt table with, with needles and thread um, to practice sewing. And so Ms. Liz is giving a quick demo. And remember, this class is student-led. So this is not like everybody make a project. This is what we're doing. Um, so this was something that they wanted to hear her say. And if they didn't, they could leave. They could go do a different station. Um, they wanted to hear this instruction. And then, um, and then they can choose whether they explore that in the way that, that she taught it, or if they want to do something different. So, um, so this is this is one of our stations. The other one that we have that's been really popular has been pom poms, and so we have. Um, I should bring it next week. Pom pom makers. They're um, they're just a like a plastic apparatus. They're kind of like a disc, and then they've got two arms that fold in and out, and you wrap. Kind of the two things that fold in and out. This makes no sense if you haven't seen one. But you wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap all of it in yarn. Click it together and then cut, cut it apart and then tie all those things in the middle. When you open up the apparatus, you have pop up, assuming you did it right. So it's it's a really fun um, kind of like once you figure it out, like meditative thing because all you're doing is wrapping yarn. Um, and so so that's been a really great one. Uh, the other one that a lot of the Liberty kids loved as a station, again, with yarn and fiber arts, is we had wall hangings that they could make with a stick. Um, Miss, Miss Sarah was like, can you get sticks? And can I get sticks? Um, I mean, I didn't even have to leave like one teeny section of my yard to collect sticks. So yes, I got sticks. So I brought in some sticks or branches from my trees that fell down. Um, and then you take pieces of yarn and you fold it in half put it over the branch and then pull the tail through. We got them hanging at both studios. This is a project we've done in the past. It's been a while since we've done this project, but it makes a, a yarn um, fiber kind of tapestry wall hanging. Um, it can be super dense or it can be super sparse and you can like make your like hanging pieces and then give it a haircut and a different shape at the bottom. And um, of course we got lots of different types of fibers and yarns that you can hang from it. Uh, so that's been a really, really popular one. So lots of great things happening. I'm trying to think. Liberty also brought in um, for their collaborative that sheet that you saw in the preschool classes that was suspended like a sail in the in the preschool classes. We brought that over to the big classroom and instead of suspending it, we hung it on the wall using thumbtacks and, and let the big kids spray bottle that and paint it with liquid watercolors. Almost like a tie-dye, which was really cool. Drawing what I want. Oh, I should mention, hang on really quick, back up. Um, creative exploration people. So you are a three time a month class. You only meet three times every single month. Um, so this week is your last week of classes for the month of April. So last time using these fiber art stations, last time exploring this kind of material, you will have one week off. I'm gonna look at my calendar and just double check because May starts on a Wednesday. We only have this class on Wednesday and Friday. So um, next week, Creative Explorations, you guys have class this week, but next week there's no class and then we're back again for that. I'll remind you in next week's video. Here we go. All right, Drawing 101s. So we're into benchmarks. Um, we're repeating those lessons that happened again in September. So if you weren't in September, you weren't, you're not behind, you're not missing anything. We still give the whole lesson, but it's fun to repeat things. 
um, and kind of see where we're at. It's also, I don't know, it's really comfortable for the kids to, cause it, you know, you walk into class and there's an unknown, like, oh, when I get, what am I going to be asked to do today? Um, and, and so to come in and be like, oh, I know how to do this. I remember doing this, um, can be super comforting, um, for some of our kids. So we're, we're doing this like close up from photo observation, um, parts of the face. In September, we only did eyes because honestly, in all the different parts of the face, eyes are the easiest thing to draw. They also have the most interesting parts to name, right? So eyelash, eyelid, iris, pupil, right? Those are eyebrow. Those are, those are lots of really fun things to name and learn that vocabulary. Um, this month, we added in our photos, and you can kind of see them down on the floor, and I also brought some. We added in our photos like mouths and noses. So they, they not only had eyes to look at, they also had noses and mouths to look at. And this, um, this especially the noses, was something that was highly requested by our kids. Um, how do I draw noses? Uh, because noses are tricky because we want to draw noses with lines, but there aren't really any lines in our nose. It's really tricky. Um, so anyways, so, so we practiced looking at photo observations. And I, funny thing, I subbed this in on Wednesday Night Makeups and I had envisioned like these being cut out. And so I, you can see Grace has hers still together. And these are the ones that, that were actually in the drawing classroom here at Liberty. Oh, they're all still together. I have no idea where the ones are that I cut out, but I cut them out for my makeup thinking, oh, this will be cute. I'll like scatter them over the table. Um, and what I didn't expect was they had a lot of fun, like bad living a face. Okay. This eyeball, this eyeball, this nose, this mouth, and then they drew the face. So that was kind of an unexpected fun thing. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of their journals. You see they've got a really cool journal. There's a lot going on in here. Um, they've got their like goal sheet and objectives and lesson sheet. And then if I flip it up, this is of what we were working on. I love this artist, this one. You guys, this is this is kind of like when we come in for 101s, a lot of what we're seeing is line drawing. Everything is contour, everything is line. Um, our goal when they by the time they finish the 101s and are ready to go to 102 is that they're starting to at least see value, see the lights, see the darks, see the scale of values that we have. Um, so it's it's super great to see we've got um basically coloring but coloring happening in pencils only you color and you adjust your pressure and that's how you adjust your values so um, lots of good things going on with that artist um and then i loved this one i guess i just go in and pull journals um because right what a great lesson here and again a lot of line drawing a lot of contour but we're labor things, right that's great i love it when um science and english and art often i'm gonna set this stuff down here and we're gonna go on to oh i should mention okay so that was last week drawing 101 this week in drawing 101 i gotta look at my notes to make sure that i'm telling you the right thing because i messed it up right earlier this month all right this week we're gonna draw from our imagination so remember in in drawing classes 101 and realistic, we draw from life, photograph, and imagination. Those are the three things. So week one was our from life, we drew portraits, right? Looking in the mirror. Week two was from photograph. And then week three, we're going to draw, we're going to pull from our imagination. Some kids are great at that. Some people are great at that. I, it is not my strength. I do not do well with that. I can draw a photo, no problem. Drawing from my imagination is totally different muscles. So. We're going to exercise those week, this week. We're going to draw from imagination. We're still doing portraiture. So it's something we've recently looked at. We've recently studied. But now, now we're going to use um, kind of our library of information that's already in our brain. Um, and we're going to switch our medium. So we're going to go to using uh, Sumi ink and either glass pens or like a straw knit. All right, drawing one of twos. So my drawing 102, advanced realistic, and my drawing 102, comic and cartoon. So comic and cartoon, again, we're back to benchmarks. So we're doing the characters in motion. 
We're using our drawing mannequins and we're putting them in poses that are dynamic and moving. And then we are fleshing those characters out. And we've had lessons, like, like all of first semester was filled with lessons in like how to draw the body and how to draw hands and how to draw feet and how to draw hair and how to draw clothing and drapery and, and like all of this stuff. And we've done line weight and we've done stippling and we've done scrumbling. And so even if you came in in January, then you take all the technical lessons and you apply them and we'll get you all of the body part lessons next, you know, like next year. And next year when people come in, even they've had, they've had the body lessons, and they get to see them again, you just refine those skills. So it's it's very spiraling, all the curriculum is. So the reason that we we kind of continue to do um, like the benchmark lessons over and over is it gives you a chance to be like, okay, okay, I've had a year of this under my belt working on these skills. Let's let's go back and and make a character in motion. So it's a lot of really great stuff happening in this last. This is the like the one I could find. The journals are getting so full. <laughs> it's really getting hard for me to find like what what page goes with what lesson. So, I mean, in my brain, you just like go to the next page, but not everybody's brain works that way. Where all the lessons are in order from start to finish. It's amazing. Everybody's brain is different and it cracks me up when the way that it works differently, right? The the people that are you those who's that people? Who's the person that is like open to a blank page and you open to something right in the middle? You know who you are. It takes all kinds. I love it. All right, I want to show you these guys. Um, fruit still life. So that's this picture right here. Our advanced realistic and back to benchmarks. This is a lesson we did at the beginning of the year. We're doing it with chalk pastels. Um. So we're trying to render lots of things. Oh, hang on. I'm going to turn this screen off because there's a lot of green in these and I don't want you to miss how amazing these are. You ready? Oops, that's not it. Let me try again. Background. I have a green screen. Okay. That should work. Um, a lot of really great things happening in some of these pictures. Now they're trying to get... Um, Scale, so how big something is relative to other things. Um, perspective, right? So what's in front and what's behind. Uh, and they're trying to get value. So shadows, lights, darks, uh, midtones. And then really tricky when we add in chalk pastels, now we have to get hue. We have to get the color right too. And the texture, all sorts of great things happening. Um, and I, you guys, these were so good. Look at like the form on that apple. Like it, it has presence. It has weight. It has. Like, it doesn't look flat. It's, that's really hard. Another really great one. These guys nailed it. They're so good. This artist had a couple drawings. Like, and this is the one I like. To be able to. Fully grasp the texture on that. One. It kind of blows it out on the camera, but a lot of great stuff going on in there. And chalk pastels are so extremely messy, so I'm trying to be really careful when I touch their artwork. And again, their journals are like incredibly full of papers and drawings and different things. Lost my light for a second. All right, so those those are our our last week's lessons in in drawing 102 in realistic. So let me go through what Drawing 102 classes, both realistic and comic, are going to be doing this week. Are you ready? So Drawing 102, comic and cartoon are going to be doing self-portraits. Um, but they have to choose a style. So we're late enough in the year that they should have a style. They should have their own signature style. They should know whether their style leans comic, whether it leans cartoon, whether it leans like towards anime, like, but we want to see them in their style. So they have, they have some really interesting design choices that they can make. They can stay black and white, or they can go with color. Um, and this is the same lesson, of course, that we did in September. But, but again, we have lots of lessons under our belt. So we're excited to see what they do with that. My drawing 102 realistics 
you guys are also doing a self-portrait, but you don't get to make quite as many design choices because your job is to draw you just as you look. So we're gonna look in a mirror and we're gonna draw what we see. So this is drawing from life. Um, we're looking for it to be as accurately represented as possible. Super fun. All right, my drawing 103s, I've got a couple of examples to show you here. And our comic drawing classes, are drawing anthropomorphic characters. So we're combining human animal characteristics. Um, they had to have like a specific like clothing and outfit that they're wearing and compositions should somehow give the, the viewer the sense that we're attending an event. So um, so we got some really amazing things started. I love this person's um, inking work so far. We've got a lot of like really delicate, subtle changes in line weight, which I think is amazing. I love these dark shadows underneath their chin. So good stuff happening there. Uh, that artist is a little bit further along than most of the other people in the closet. Inking, really, in week two, all we were looking for was to get to pencil drawing done. Um, so they'll actually begin inking this week. Got some characters going on. Now my week, or my advanced realistic 103s, we're looking for a botanical um, inspired drawing that is very graphic, it fills the space of the paper and uses like scientific illustration techniques. And so this person I thought did a really nice job filling the space. We're looking for a balance between positive and negative space. Um, just beginning on the inking. Here's another one that I pulled. What an interesting, I don't even know. I assume it goes this way, but it could go lots of different ways, right? As an illustrative. But again, it has that balance between positive and negative space where we're looking for like 50-50. So the background and the subject is like 50-50. Um, this one's a little harder to see because a lot of it's still in pencil. But I'm pretty sure it's a Venus flytrap, which is amazing. And it's a Venus flytrap from like an open mouth perspective, like we're looking into it. And I adore that composition. It'd be really fun to see how those take shape. On to housekeeping. Oh, and so you guys, they're just working. Like 103, they, they just come in, they get their challenge. Benchmarks are, you know, brainstorming the first week, pencil sketches the second week, finishing on weeks three and four. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. It's finishing next two weeks. Okay. Couple housekeeping things. Then I'll let everybody go. The art show is this Sunday. So it's five to seven at the Belvoir Winery. You don't have to RSVP in previous years. We've had you RSVP based on like capacity and food. And so I don't need anyone to RSVP. I ordered a ton of cookies. We've got some punch and some water bottles. So just super, super easy on refreshments. Uh, uh, if you want a bottle of wine or a glass of wine, the bar downstairs will be open as well as soft drinks if you want that. Um, so that'll be open for you. There is not dinner. So make sure you like eat before you come and plan on eating after. So it is from five to seven. Should be plenty of room for everybody to come in there'll be lots of great photo ops so uh, lots of great places to take photos got a couple installations uh, i'm trying to think what else we've got a bingo card for the kids to to do as an activity i'm kind of almost like a scavenger hunt um so that they've got something to do during the show more than just look at their art um else if there's anything i need to tell you i think that's it so we hope you can come it should be super fun um and junior staff application deadline is today so april 15th same as taxes which is what i'm doing after this um the application deadline is today so make sure that you get those in if you're a new applicant that's the deadline get them in if you're a returning applicant like if you're returning staff you, you don't have to do anything for a little while um, actually, it's all the way back. Usually it's earlier, but it's all the way back on May 12th by the time I need your availability. Um, and a couple of reasons for that being pushed. One is just that the art show and it just it just it's too much for me to keep doing like too many things on my list. I can't deal with it until then. So I might as well push the deadline out. Um, the other reason is staff training is so much later this year that that I didn't really need to have your stuff on. There's that. And then looking ahead, just a reminder, we mentioned it at the beginning of the video and then also in kind of the middle. Looking ahead to the end of this month, 429 and 430 is a Monday and a Tuesday. 
It is a fifth Monday and a fifth Tuesday. All drawing and multimedia students will have class. We'll not have the preschool classes. We'll not have toddler classes. We won't have, well, there aren't any creative explorations those days anyway, but, but none of those, just the drawing and just the multimedia students. You guys will have class and we will start May projects. The May medals projects and the May drawing lessons will start those days so that we can finish before Memorial. And you guys, I think that's all for me. So if you need anything from me, if you have questions, um, you know where to find me. Best way to reach me is with a quick DM to one of our social media channels. I do get to those super fast. The next best way is via email and I get to those every single day. So, um, so I promise it won't take more than 24 hours to get a response there, usually much less. Hope everyone has a wonderful week and I will see you in the studio.